Hi, I'm Holly Yanka. I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. I'm also the director of the New England Robotics Validation and Experimentation, or NERV Center. Today, I'm going to give you a virtual tour of the NERV Center. The NERV Center is located at 110 Canal Street in Lowell, Massachusetts, right near downtown Lowell. Also in the building with the NERV Center are the UMass Lowell Innovation Hub, a startup incubator, the Massachusetts Medical Devices Development Center, also an incubator but for medical devices, and the Fabric Discovery Center, in which they have the ability to print flexible electronics, coach threads, and to weave those threads and fibers with electronics into new pieces of clothing or other types of soft uh, materials. As I mentioned, the Nerve Center is also in this building. At the Nerve Center, we focus on evaluating robot systems to enable us to have much better systems developed with our research. We focus on many different types of platforms, including exoskeletons, disaster response, industrial automation, UASs, and, and many other types of robots. This is our faculty and staff at the Nerve Center. On the top, you can see our administrative structure. So myself, the director, Adam Norton, the associate director, our scientific leads, and our test engineer, Brian Flynn. All of our affiliated faculty are also listed on this page. Rather than go through the faculty on this page, I'd like to show you instead this view. I think this really demonstrates the strengths that we have in the Nerve Center. We're very interdisciplinary. So in addition to the strengths that one would normally see in robotics, computer science, mechanical engineering, and electrical and computer engineering, we also have physical therapy and kinesiology, biomedical engineering, and plastics engineering, rounding out our expertise in robotics and allowing us to take on a wider variety of projects, particularly projects that involve robots working with people or people wearing those robots. Let's start the tour. Here we're coming into the first floor of the Nerve Center. The Nerve Center is approximately 10,000 square feet spread over three floors of 110 Canal. This is our first floor space. We're about to walk into two adjoining rooms that make up our map labs, the movement assessment platform labs. Here we have an experiment set up for collaboration with Worcester Polytechnic Institute to use FNIRs to measure workload when people are working with robots. As we turn, we pass one of our motion capture systems and move towards the second room. These rooms have a divider between them that can be closed during experimentation. We see here our split belt treadmill, which is part of our map labs the faculty are Professor Pei Chun Kao and Professor Winnie Wu are the two faculty who really run these two labs. Uh, they are both in physical therapy and kinesiology. And the nice thing about these labs, it gives us the ability to look at how people move and how robots move. And then really, how does the combination of people with robots when we start looking at people wearing exoskeletons? Professor Yan Gu in mechanical engineering also works in these labs. She's very interested in walking robots and how can we have improved control for safe and reliable legged locomotion? And then how can we create better controls for exoskeletons? As we continue the tour, we'll exit the map labs. We'll see some of the sensors that we use in our work here. And then as we turn to the left, we'll see a Vasper bike. This is a bike that actively cools you while you're using it. It's meant to give you a low impact workout that simulates a high impact workout. Uh, my colleague, Professor Winnie Wu, is using that in a study with people with concussions. As we approach here, this is a test apparatus that we're working on some work with NIST to develop standards to test robots for manufacturing floors. In this, we're actually developing a navigation obstacle avoidance test suite so that we have a robot that has a map of the environment and we're trying to measure what happens when we change that map. How does the robot adapt to changes in the map, whether they're temporary or permanent? Continuing on, we're coming to an area where we've been doing some work for CCDC Soldier Center in Natick, Massachusetts to evaluate exoskeletons and bomb suits. So you'll see that we have different types of staircases. We're going over a ramp here. We have hurdles. We had a force plate that we passed. And we're using all of these to do testing for the human, humanoid, and wearable robot evaluation. 
So you'll see that treadmill that we saw in the map labs running on the left hand side. It's able to move in many different ways. And you'll see that on the top there, we show some of the tests that we have done with exoskeletons in our sand pit, as well as in test courses. And then on the lower part, we have replicated NIST Colate apparatus, the position and load test apparatus for exoskeletons, which you'll see further on in the tour. So we're using these different methods to characterize performance with exoskeleton applications. This is work that we're also doing for CCDC Soldier Center. So, so far we have tested four different exoskeletons for CCDC, the Lockheed Martin Onyx, the Defy Exoboot, both lower body exoskeletons, and now we're working on testing Exodest and Seismic, both upper body systems. Okay, in a number of ASTM committees, including E5409 and F45, we've been developing standards with NIST and ASTM for mobility with obstacles, inspection dexterity and operator training, as well as navigation with different types of obstacles. We have also looked at evaluating human robot interaction for response robots across many different test apparatuses. In this case, a test how the operator uses the interface and how efficient that interface lets the operator be, rather than focusing on the robot's performance. So we've also evaluated human robot interaction for response robots at the DARPA Robotics Challenge trials and finals in 2013 and 2015, respectively. We had the opportunity together with colleagues at Boston Engineering and Anthrotronics to study the HRI that had been developed by all the teams for these challenges. We continue the tour past the sand and gravel, past the Pilate apparatus, and, and towards a space that my colleague, Professor Giraffe, is using for his lab right now. Professor Giraffe's research focuses on small micro UASs and swarms, looking at how to do photorealistic UAS swarming through a virtual reality interface, how to do mapping with those unlocalized swarms so they can all create a joint map together, and then having controlling these multi-agent systems towards a particular area of interest. Our work has also looked at the evaluation of UAS systems in the field. We were the test and evaluation performers for the DARPA Fast Lightweight Autonomy Program. On the upper left-hand side, you can see the old F-15 hangar at Joint Base Cape Cod that we turned into a large warehouse to be testing indoor operations for the performers on the FLA program. On the top right is testing that we did at Avon Park down in Florida. Uh, where we were taking UASs and going in and out of buildings and in high density um, foliage. And on the lower left, you can see us going into buildings. This is actually work that we did down at Guardian Centers in Perry, Georgia. The work that we did for DARPA has enabled us to develop what we call the Mobile Nerve Center, where we can take our testing and evaluation capabilities on the road, whether it be outdoors, indoors, in a manufacturing environment, we continue our tour on the first floor towards the back of the space here. And as we turn the corner here, we'll be looking at a scooter with the robot arm attached, as well as a Baxter robot in front of it. This project is a joint project with Professor Rob Platt at Northeastern University. We've developed two scooters, both on NSF projects, where we're investigating manipulation of unmodeled objects for people with disabilities or with difficulty moving. The scooter in the center shows a projector. We're developing an interface that allows us to project into the world to show where the robot can reach, such as the top right, where the green spaces are spaces that the robot can reach, and the red is where it cannot reach, and then indicating what you want in the world using a laser pointer so that the interface is all directly in the world. People point to what they want in the world, and all the information about what the robot is going to pick up is displayed in that world. We now continue our tour on the second floor of 110 Canal in a space that we call the Robot Armada. Here we have a number of arms and manipulators as well as 3D printers so that we can develop and evaluate systems for grasping and for industrial manufacturing. This space also has lab space for some of our faculty, including Professor Amitzada and Professor Robinette. 
Through this window, you can see the Fabric Discovery Center. The closest machine is the Jacquard Loom. And beyond that are some of the other machines used to code fibers, to weave those fibers, and to print flexible electronics. As we turn back towards the Armada, you'll see that some of the robot arms are missing. They were taken home during the COVID shutdown. Some of our other robots are still in this space where we do some of our testing and development on these robot systems. As we swing around the corner, you'll see a number of the grippers as well as more robot arms. To the left is the Fetch It Arena. Fetch It was a competition held at ICRO in 2019 where we took second place. We now use that for work that we're doing with the Office of Naval Research on Amuri. You'll see a Baxter robot, an ABB Yumi, and this concludes us walking through the nerve space. The Armada Industrial Manipulator Testbed is made up of a number of different robot systems, many of them industrial robot arms, focused on collaborative manufacturing, as well as some mobile manipulators, such as the Fetch Mobile Manipulator. And we also have a new Agility Robotics Digit Robot, the walking robot. Professor Yang Gu is using this for her research. The Armada also includes a wide variety of robot grippers and other manipulators so that we can test the robot arms with different end effectors. We also have a large number of sensors. We're utilizing the equipment in the robot armada for an NSF CCRI project that's a collaboration with Oregon State University. In this project, we are developing the capability for researchers to send their code to be tested on different robot arms and grippers. We're developing test apparatuses that can automatically reset themselves. When an object is taken from a shelf by a robot, then the test apparatus can put that object back on the shelf automatically. We're also developing a number of manipulation test methods and benchmarks in collaboration with NIST, where we're looking at grasp and finger performance test methods. We're looking at assembly test methods and methods for measuring collaboration. With the ARM Institute, the Advanced Robotics for Manufacturing Institute, we are developing metrics and evaluation methods so that we can measure project progress for the performers at the Arm Institute. YCD object and model set can be purchased from the Nerve Center, as well as in this assembly task board. If you're interested in acquiring either of these benchmark tools, please go to nerve.uml.edu to learn more about purchasing. As I mentioned, Professor Paul Robinette uses this lab space up on the second floor of 110 Canal. Professor Robinette focuses on human-robot interaction and human-robot trust, as well as field robotics and marine robotics. He works in the nerve center to develop the robots that he will then take out onto the water. Professor Reza Ahmedzada focuses on learning from demonstration and mobile manipulation. He also conducts work with the robot armada systems. This space is also used for work on an ONR MURI together with Tufts University, Brigham Young University, and Carnegie Mellon University. For this project, we're using our Fetch robot, and we're using the software developed for the Fetch It competition, which was developed by students at Professor Ahmed Zada's lab, as well as mine. We took second place in the competition at ICRA in 2019. In the competition, we needed to pick up different parts. In this case, we needed to insert a gear into a machine for machining, and then go and find other parts, such as gearbox parts, small gears, and screws to be put into a kit and used. We're using this setup for our MURI in which we're trying to have robots that can self-assess their performance based on past performance and what's happening in the current situations. In our work at UMass Lowell for the MURI, we're trying to figure out how best to have robots explain their behaviors to people. So when they fail to do something or when they're having trouble doing something, how do they explain that to the user? These are some of our sponsors at the Nerve Center. Thank you to all the sponsors. And thank you to you for attending the tour today. At the Nerve Center, in addition to doing our own testing on projects, we also provide testing services for other people who need them as a core research facility. If you find yourself in need of robot testing services, please do contact us. My email address is at the bottom of the screen, or you can email nerve at cs.uml.edu. Thank you very much.